two small blocks, each of mass m, are connected by a string of constant length 4 h and negligible mass. Block A is placed on a smooth tabletop, as shown above, and block B hangs over the edge of the table. The tabletop is a distance 2 h above the floor. Block B is then released from rest at a distance h above the floor at time t equals 0. Express all algebraic answers in terms of h, m, and g. Part A. Determine the acceleration of block B as it descends. Well, let's just start off by drawing some free body diagrams, and that will allow us to write Newton's second law pretty straightforward, and we'll work on solving for acceleration. So, starting with the free body diagram, we can say that for block B, there's only two forces acting on it, and they're both in the y direction. Block B is um, accelerating downward, so the force of gravity should be drawn a little bit longer than the tension force, which is acting upward. And writing down Newton's second law, we can say that the sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. And we can plug these two forces in. And for this problem, let's assume that because the block is moving in the downward direction, we're expecting our acceleration to be in the downward direction. So let's choose the direction of motion to be positive, which means we're actually going to say that mg is our positive force and tension is our negative force. And that means we can rearrange for tension, which is equal to mg minus ma. And to determine the acceleration, it's easiest if we also solve tension in the other block, and then we can set those two tensions equal to each other. So drawing the free body diagram for the block on the table, we're going to have a normal force that exactly counteracts the force of gravity because there's no acceleration in the y direction and of course tension is pulling the block to the right and Newton's second law is going to be the same but this time we can write in the x direction and there's only one force in the x direction which is tension and using the direction of motion to be positive again we'll say that tension is positive and that's equal to ma so like I mentioned before we're going to set these two tensions equal to each other so we're going to have mg minus ma equal to ma. And then solving for acceleration, we can move our terms with a onto the same side. And all of the m's can cancel. So rearranging for acceleration, we get 1 half g. All right, I'm just thinking too, there's one other way we could solve this, which would be the acceleration. This is kind of the shortcut way, is the sum of all external forces divided by mass total. And all of the external forces um, is really just going to be this force of gravity acting on mass B. Uh, so we can say mg divided by the total mass, which is 2m, gives us g over 2 automatically. So there's kind of two ways to do this problem. All right, then let's go read part B. Part block B strikes the floor and does not bounce. Determine the time t equals t1 at which block b strikes the floor. All right, so we know that it's accelerating, and we're asked to solve for the amount of time. We also know that block b started at a height h above the ground. So my thought process is jumping right to a kinematics equation, one that has height, acceleration, and time. So that's going to be this one right here. And we can rearrange this for t which will give us this equation here. And of course, we cannot plug in g for the acceleration in the y direction because we just solved for that in part a and found that it was half g. So plugging in g over 2 for acceleration in the y direction, we get that the time it takes for block b to hit the ground is going to be the square root of 4 times the height divided by g. Part C. Describe the motion of block A from time t equals 0 to the time when block B strikes the floor. Well, because they're tethered together by the exact same string, we can just say that block A is going to accelerate with the same acceleration that block B is experiencing. Part D. Describe the motion of block A from the time block B strikes the floor to the time block A leaves the table. 
Well, once block B strikes the ground, there's not going to be any more forces acting on block A, so it's going to just move at constant velocity. Remember, that comes from Newton's first law, which says that in the absence of forces, objects will either be at rest or continue to move at constant velocity. Part E, determine the distance between the landing points of the two blocks. All right, so we just said in part D that once block B hits the ground, block A is just gonna keep moving at a constant velocity. So in order to calculate the distance that it lands away from the table, we're gonna to need to know what that velocity is. So using another equation, it's gonna be a kinematics equation, we're gonna need um, acceleration and time and velocity in it, which is this equation. And of course the initial velocity is zero, so velocity A is just gonna be proportional to the acceleration times the amount of time. And we can plug in the time that we found in part B because that's how long block B is falling for. That's also how long block A is gonna accelerate for. So that ends up giving us G over two times square root of four H over G, but we can put those two together uh, by squaring the piece that's outside and then putting it inside the radical. So the square root of g squared over 4 is the same as g over 2, but now we can put those two square roots together and simplify the terms inside, which just gives us a simple equation for the velocity of block A when it reaches the end of the table. The second piece we need to figure out is how long block A is going to be in the air for. So we're going to use the same equation we used in part B. The change in height is equal to 1 half gt squared. I used g this time because it's now falling all on its own. There's not going to be that acceleration any longer that we solved for in part A. It's just going to be g. So we can rearrange this equation, or not exactly rearrange, but we can plug in our values. We know that the change in height for block A as it leaves the table is 2h and it's equal to 1 half gt squared. So rearranging for t, we get that t is equal to the square root of 4h over g. Coincidentally, the same as what we got for part B. And we can solve for the distance that it travels by using distance equals velocity in the x direction times time. And we just solved for velocity in the x direction and the amount of time, plugging those two equations together gives us 2h. So it will end up being 2h away from the table. And we know that block B is just going to strike the ground. And because it has no velocity in the x direction, it's just going to land directly below where it started. So the distance between their landing positions is just going to be the distance that block A lands.